Can someone please explain to me how the best movie based off of any DC Comics property to come out in the last 15 years is DC The League of Super Pets. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Glassfoot, this movie's been out for like four weeks. Why are you just now reviewing it? Or more likely, there is no way that DC League of Super Pets is the best DC movie to come out in the last 15 years. I'm not kidding. I'm being 100% serious when I say that DC League of Super Pets is the best movie that DC has produced since The Dark Knight. Of everything DC has released since The Dark Knight, this movie is the best one that they have done. Yes, that includes Zack Snyder's Justice League, that includes Wonder Woman, that includes Shazam, that includes The Man of Steel. This is the best one. And I don't know why. Apparently, DC has decided that all of their creative minds ever, when it comes to their feature movies, and any kind of release of a film goes into their animation department. The best thing that DC has released within the past 10 years, in my opinion, has been the DC animated movie. Starting with Flashpoint Paradox and then ending with Justice League Doom Apocalypse War. These films had entertaining writing, good character development, and were just overall really enjoyable movies to watch, especially if you were a DC fan who wanted something that was a little more adult-oriented because, oh boy, did the animated movies have a lot of blood and gore. DC has kept that streak up with the League of Super Pets. I do not know why they decided to put all their effort into Super Pets. Seriously, this movie's good. Like, I, I don't get why this movie worked so well. Quick plot summary, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers as much as I can. DC League of Super Pets follows Crypto the Superdog, played by Dwayne Johnson. Crypto is Superman's best friend. He has been with him since he was a puppy, and they got launched off of Krypton together. They have always been there for each other, and to Crypto, Superman is his best friend, and his one duty is to protect Superman. The main conflict of this film actually arises from the fact that Crypto doesn't want to be replaced, and he feels that Lois Lane is potentially going to replace him. So he, while angry at Superman, doesn't hear when Superman gets kidnapped, and as a result has to form the League of Super Pets, which are a group of pets that were at a shelter that got superpowers when a piece of orange kryptonite fell into the shelter because the crazed guinea pig that was also at the same shelter really wanted powers so that she could prove herself to be the best person to Lex Luthor and super evil. Basically, she wanted to take over the world because the guinea pig was like, saw herself as a scientist dude that wanted to work with Lex. So now, Crypto, who does not have his powers for a majority of this film, has to work with these pets who have just gotten these abilities to try and save Superman and then the rest of the Justice League because, of course, she also kidnapped them. And this movie is surprisingly heartwarming. There are multiple points at this film where it actually takes the time to slow down and kind of have this moment of when you love someone, you will do whatever it takes to help them, even if it hurts you in the process. A really good example of this is Ace's backstory, something I don't want to get into super heavily here, but it actually was a very touching moment in the film. This movie's also funny, and I know when I say that, you're gonna think, wow, you laughed at kid jokes. No, the jokes had thought put into them. Yeah, there's some jokes that kind of fall flat, like the whole crypto wearing glasses thing to disguise himself as a normal dog but honestly there are a number of jokes that work also this movie's edgy by which i mean there are cuss words in it and i don't just mean like crap and hell both of which do get dropped there are three direct instances where words are bleeped out within the film 
I'm a presuming to keep the PG rating. Those words are shit and fuck. No, I'm not kidding. I, I was not expecting it, and it was very surprising. And it threw me off guard. Yeah, the comedy in this film works surprisingly well. There's a lot of, like, slapstick humor, which I'm personally a sucker for. But surprisingly, the movie was very entertaining. This movie isn't just for little kids. I assume this movie is going to be something like a time waster. Something for parents to throw on for their kids to watch while they have, like, a dinner party or something. But no, this movie is actually good. The storytelling is really well done. A story that revolves around the idea of found family and what you do to protect them and help them, I think really works to this film's advantage at the end of the day. And it's just a legitimately entertaining film. It's a very fun ride to go on. Especially because these characters are well written. Even the Justice League, which are parody versions of the characters written to make little kids laugh, are done really well. It's clear that the writers of this film have an understanding of who each of these characters are to be able to make fun of them in such a way that still feels respectful to who the characters are. Obviously, there are multiple points where, like, Batman is the whole, I am the dark brooding knight, but he isn't 100% like that, and honestly, Keanu Reeves' performance as Batman, I think, did a really good job, especially in this animated movie. Also, I have to give this movie props for using Jessica Cruz's Green Lantern. Now, personally, I would love to see Jon Stewart Green Lantern get some love in a freaking movie, because he is the best version of Green Lantern. Yes, I'm biased because I grew up watching Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, and he's the Green Lantern of that show. No, I will not be taking criticism for that opinion. Jon Stewart is the best Green Lantern, and I, I dare anyone to try and prove me wrong. But another thing I have to give this movie props for is Wonder Woman's character design. She has muscles. Almost every version of Wonder Woman that I've ever seen is still traditionally, like, thin, and the muscles don't look big. She doesn't look like she's super strong. The design in this movie actually gave her those muscles. Now, it's not like, you know, Superman broad chest level where, like, it looks like she goes and does nothing but lift weight every day, but it still looks like, you know, bigger muscles that she logically would have, and I give the movie designers props for that. Every character in this film has design elements to them that work for who the character is. Hey, so I've tried to find character designs for a Cyborg and for Aquaman uh, in this little segment where I'm talking about character designs. This is the best I could do because their character designs are not readily available very easily on the internet and I don't know why that is. Probably because a Cyborg looks like this for some reason. I do not understand why they gave him a half afro. I think Cyborg's design is a little wonky personally, but I do actually kind of enjoy it. They made Flash super, like, thin and skinny, which he logically would be. I do think my favorite, one of my favorite designs is Aquaman. They obviously play on Jason Momoa's Aquaman look from the DC Cinematic Universe, but they also gave him his freaking hook hand from the 90s and early 2000s, which I thought is a really neat treat to anyone who's ever read comics from that period. It's really subtle, and I thought it was actually pretty cool. But at the end of the day, if you like DC, if you like the Super Pets especially, if you like seeing good, kind of jokey parody versions of characters, I have to recommend that you go watch DC League of Super Pets. I don't know how I'm giving this recommendation, but I am. What has this world come to? Anyway... For me, personally, DC League of Super Pets rolls an 18. The movie is incredibly solid, super entertaining, and if you have little kids or you're an adult who's a fan of DC, I would recommend going out to watch this movie. And especially if you have little kids who you want to get into comic books or who are comic book fans, this movie is absolutely brilliant for them. The performances are great, they're extremely well done, and really really entertaining especially if you have an idea already established of who these people are and who these characters are if you are a fan of dc i highly 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 recommend 
you go out and watch this movie because I guarantee you are going to have a good time. Now, I actually didn't plan on releasing this video because I didn't plan on watching DC Super Pets. I was planning on just letting this movie go and maybe when it came to like streaming or something, just go ahead and watching it, you know, just as something to be on in the background while I did other stuff. But my friend Craig from the Permanent Good podcast put me onto this film and told me that I actually had to go see it because it was legitimately good. The fact that it is as good as it is scares me still. But if you want to hear his insight on other movies uh, in general with his podcasting friend, I would, I'm going to leave a link to the Permanent Good podcast down in the description below. Please go check it out. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Basically, it's two guys just chatting about movies that they've watched and giving their personal insight on the two of them. Seriously, you're going to have a good time if you go check it out. But if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, links to all of them are going to be in the description down below. But that is all I have for you guys. I hope that everyone watching has an absolutely fantastic day. But that is all I have for now. And until next time, peace.